I started in the State Library in 2008 and have worked in a few different roles, in the bookshop as a library officer and client services, and admin assistant and doing rosters. I don't have a library background and I was fascinated at the things that we have in our collections. I started in my current role, volunteers team leader, in November 2011. One of the great things about the being the team leader for the volunteers is that everyone in my team wants to be here. And the really wonderful thing about this role is the people. The State Library currently has a pool of about 100 volunteers who help us out in all sorts of ways. There's a guideline from Volunteering Australia that states that volunteers shouldn't do more than 16 hours a week, and we have three people that do that. We have some that have a regular weekly gig. They may help us to process donated materials. We have wonderful collections of private archives that include letters, diaries, journals, newspaper cuttings, all sorts of things. They may transcribe handwritten biographical cards or oral histories. They survey our clients. Volunteers have been a big help with this one. We're in the second year of a daily survey of our clients and volunteers both collect the survey forms and enter the data. We've had one volunteer who has done this almost every Saturday and Sunday since the survey began. Volunteers are also ushers for movies. They shelve discarded public library books in the shop and assist at book launches. We have volunteers who help us with events and exhibitions. The list goes on and on. Our volunteers are a very diverse group and come from all walks of life. We have people who have been everything from baristas to zoologists. They are from 18 to in their 80s and from many different countries. Iran, Hungary, Korea, Tanzania, all over the place. The pleasure has been getting to know them and their stories. One of our volunteers, Pam, who has been with us for 28 years, was an air hostess in the 1950s and tells a delightful story about her flights up to the Pilbara and the Kimberley. They would serve meals on the flights and breakfast was funny. The men could have two boiled eggs and the women one. Then the air hostesses had to do the washing up after they served the meals and they would con the passengers into doing it, or at least drying, by smiling sweetly at them. The passengers loved helping. They would get to see the back of the aircraft, stretch their legs and have a good chat. Can you imagine something like that happening now? On a more sombre note, Pam has a photo that she took in 1953 at the Broome Airport that she's donated to the State Library. It's of the first group of Japanese pearl divers to come to Broome after the bombing of Darwin and Broome in World War II. At that time, there was still a lot of hatred towards the Japanese and there were protesters at the Darwin Airport when they arrived. The feeling towards them was so intense that, for their safety, the men were driven onto the tarmac by bus and escorted onto the DC-3 for the second part of their flight. Their arrival at Broome Airport was much friendlier. I read a quote on volunteering that said, you are not just asking people to work for free. It's about giving them an opportunity to make their lives richer. I think the opposite of that is true too. Knowing them makes our lives richer also.